Steve and Jill here. Hi. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about splitting parcels 101. All week this week, it's this imp- week? how to improve your property or okay. property improvement. Should you do it? Shouldn't you do it? If you have to, splitting in my for my money is the best way to Just dramatically increase how much money you're making. I'll go through the math in this episode and... Uh, the process, mm-hmm. and why it's uh, why it's so incredibly valuable. About when to do it, when not to do yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Good. The whole deal. Cool. I look at it this way too. What I love about splitting parcels, people always say, "Oh, they're not making any more land." Oh, but hold on. <laughs> you can add an APN. I love that. Hey, Ooh. buy land. They're not making any more. Watch yeah. me. Hey, get a new cliche. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Watch me. Yeah. Turn watch that. Jill de- generate watch money. Watch me by making more land. Make more land. <laughs> And I'm not talking the Dutch way, like really making land, which they are doing, but it's a different way. Thanks. Exactly. <laughs> Before we get into this, though, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Mike asks, hi, all. What does it mean if the parcel owner listed on the county website is a title company? Do they own it or are they holding it for someone like a trust, etc.? Would these be good to send an offer letter to? Thanks. Great awesome question. This question. is a master's degree, maybe PhD level question. Exactly. Why the heck would would a, a title company like First American Title? Yeah. If you, why would they own property? If, if you've exactly. ever processed data and sent a mailer out, this happens all the time. You know, you always scrub through the data just to see where there's weird ownership because you don't want to waste time and money sending a letter to the city of Maricopa or the, the fire department or a church well not a church yes but fire yeah, or department ho- or a hospital or any right. municipality or and in there is like there's always questionable ones like what the heck is this should I send Sorry. this or not title companies are uh, you know they fall into that gray area so here's the deal when people buy property or they own it and they sell it on terms in, in the deed of trust way which we don't recommend they have to go or should go through a title company. And the title company creates the documents, does the whole thing, they create a deed of trust, which puts a lien and a trustee on the property. I know this is a little bit complicated. And great, the seller owns the property, the buyer starts making payments, just like you would in a house. This is exactly, in a lot of states, how you would buy a house. Mm-hmm. You go to a mortgage company, they give you a loan, they uh, put a trustee in place, and or maybe they act as a trustee in some situations. Uh, do you ever hear trust deed inv- investing? That's what this is. Yeah. So, as often happens, uh, several months or years later, the sellers or the buyers no longer interested in making the payments, or they can't make the payments, or they just stop making the payments. Right. Maybe they die. Right. That happens more often than not. And this the title company is sitting there saying, "Well, where's the payments? I contacted the buyer uh, right. fifty times. It's just over." It's been it's been it's ninety days. Right. They exercise uh, some version of a foreclosure, or I think in in a lot of cases it's not even required. It just reverts back to them, right. and so, because they're so good at deeds and recording and all of this, they take the property back. Right. And then they wait for their the people above them, their bosses, or their corporate to tell them what to do. And it, just like every big company, they they never get any clear direction. Right. They end up owning a ton of property. Where, where did the seller go? The seller, uh, okay, this, this is a great question. Thank, Thank you. you. The <laughs> seller sits and looks at this and says, it's going to cost me $1,000 or $1,200 to, to actually get this property back in my name. Right. I have to go through a, 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 some version of an, a reverse foreclosure myself, for lack of a better description. Exactly. Screw that. You can have the property. I've been paid out. I was paid out a year ago. I inherited the property, <laughs> so I have no ca- basis yeah. in it at all. And then number two, I got, yeah. I already got I, my I money back. I have five years of payments on the 20-year payment. I got my payment. back. I don't, I don't want I don't, it. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. I'm done. So they end up with with adverse, it's a version of adverse possession. Right. That's how how and why. So the, the second part of the question is, should I send them a letter? There's a very good chance you're wasting your time sending a letter. However, what I've done in the past, in the distant past, is got a hold of the branch because you'll see right on there it's first american title number 1384 which is like their branch number Mm -hmm. and you get to the top person there on the phone 
and you say, I, re- I want all these properties, and the chances are they're going to say, yeah, I mean, I've been staring at those two for about 15 years. Right. Maybe, let me make a couple of calls. I'll call my regional. I'll call me if you, and if there's a small chance, but you get to the right person. That's the key. They're going to say, hallelujah, thanks. Yeah. Because they haven't been paying a taxes. We don't want them. They do not pay taxes on the property. That's true. It's because the county's going to get it back eventually. Mm-hmm. So you're just taking them out off their, off their hands early, correct? Okay, so yeah. that we answered the question. Here's the question you should be asking yourself. Cool. Do you want to go through all this? <laughs> or do you just want to send That's another true. mailer out? And a bajillion people are going to write back to you and say, oh, oh thanks for let, writing me a letter. I, I do want to sell my property right. for $500. So it's, this is a timely question. Mm-hmm. All this week we're talking about stuff you have to do or could do or potentially do to your land after you bought it mm-hmm. to make it more valuable to resell it. Right. And the answer is... Do nothing. That should always be your first option. <laughs> I got to add something because this is, I think this is really funny. Some people, not you, this is not you. Not, oh, here we go. No, 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 I'm serious. It's not, you'll know it doesn't even apply to you. But some people have to try one and see, and it's comical. So, you know, if it's really, really, really important to you, do one. Sure. Go down then that you'll path. Never do it again. And there you go. And you know what it's like? It's like um, people who have tested sending mail only to back tax property. Perfect example. And then they've tested sending mail to all of the properties. Like that's our number one way. And when they t- run the, I, and I highly recommend if you don't 100% aren't sure which is the best way, please try them. And then you will see. <laughs> You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's comical. I'm like, you know what? Do it. Test it. Hey, and maybe maybe it works for you. Maybe maybe I'm wrong and whatever it is is the way you like doing things. That could maybe be you and like that's headaches. fine. <laughs> You're right. And losing sleep. <laughs> so, and and a lot of time. But no, I'm just joking. But anyway, t- try it. So don't, I mean, that's my thing too. If you're not sure, try one and you and then you'll decide for yourself like, all right, never mind. And then, you know, and some people just have to do it themselves. There's yep, they things, have to touch it. You know what it is? I'm that way on some things and I can't think of them right now, but there's things that even though I know, I can't think of a good example, but I know there's things that you tell me, Jill, if you keep doing that, it's going to break. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Seriously. There's some real derogatory stuff that just came into my mind. All right. Anyway, <laughs> don't go there. But you know, that's what happens. There's, I know there's times in my life where people have said, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm telling you yeah. now. And like, I've done that to the kids, especially I'm telling you that's going to mm-hmm. break. And then sure enough, I'm like, all right, there we go. Are you, are you done now? Yeah. Okay. What do you said, think it is? Said to see it for myself. Do you ever go shopping with somebody, even in a grocery store? And uh, you're not like this at all, seriously. Okay. They have to just touch everything. Oh gosh. Oh. You so know there's, what? you know, of our five senses, there are p- people that have to, and it takes them forever to do anything because yeah. they have to touch it and think about it, and eventually probably feel it. Exactly. Feel it in their emotions. I know. I yeah. I do not want. I can't stand that. Any. I have no interest in like going to see our property unless it's super super cool. Right. If you've ever renovated a house, well, that's ever, the worst. ever renovated a house, you know exactly what we're talking about. There's multiple times, I don't care if you're on TV or not, where you're in the middle of a renovation saying, I don't know if this is worth it. I don't think this is actually worth the money and the time that we're doing. I should have just marked the but thing up for 25 late, grand. I should have take, bought this house, put a lockbox on it, kicked out all the real estate agents, and sent a, a, a letter or an email to the people who are renovating houses around here right now, mark yeah. it up twenty grand and move on to the next deal. That's what we do. Well, how many times do you find that too? Remember that we we've if you've been in this business at all for for any you know a considerable amount of time and especially done you know renovations and house flips and stuff. I'm I know I'm getting in ahead in the house stuff, but um, it's funny how you find things like they've already gutted it. They and you're buying a house already gutted because they obviously they changed their away, mind yeah. and. Or they they're halfway done with the renovation and they walked out. So it's, it's funny how that yeah. you, if you come across those and you so and I think it might be a lot of what you're saying. They're yep. like, this is not worth it, man. <laughs> <laughs> or just something happened in their life that they, needs attention. I mean, that's true. Given the choice, don't improve anything. Right. Here's what I think: if you have to improve property or you're really seriously considering it, one of two things is going on. A, you didn't buy it cheap enough. 
That's your job here. Right. Your job is to negotiate it or price it or just it, your job is acquisitions to do great acquisitions because the right. sales will immediately follow. Or you all what you learned your whole life about maximizing price. This is what the whole world tells you. Get as much as you possibly can for that piece of property or don't sell it. Right. And that's ridiculous. It yeah. cracks me up. Market exactly. up twenty to twenty five thousand dollars. You know it's worth eighty thousand more. Maybe a hundred. Yeah. Mark it up twenty twenty five. Move on to the next deal. Exactly. Next deal. Next deal. Next well deal. my thing is too, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. How fast she was kinda asking me about flipping properties and timeline. I'm like, Well, you know what? How fast how fast do you want to sell? If you're gonna hang out for top dollar, if you're gonna ask for top dollar you are sure can. It's going to take, gonna take two you years. some while. So you're going to have to sit and wait yep. and wait and wait and wait for that right person to come. And you better be mm-hmm. reaching too, by the way. You got to reach them. So get it out there a lot. You're not waiting. So you're, you're working hard to you find that find a the, a person who falls in love with that piece of real estate so much right. that they don't care about the price. Exactly. That's a lot of work. That's going to take some time. I agree. And they're going to have a lot of questions. And Versus mark it up. Knows. Mark it up, or in our case with our land, double it. Get out. Exactly. So, Today's topic, Splitting Parcels 101. This is the meat of the show. If you have to, if you really have to, improve your property. <laughs> Sounds like you can't stand <laughs> not touching it. You've got to have your hands on or in everything. Go ahead, sir. And you're obsessive. Yes, Splitting property can be incredibly profitable. Here's an example of a split that we're doing right now. So Jill and I sent a house mailer out, bought a property. It, we, we own it right now. As of right now, we own it. Right. And it's got a massive backyard that's very easily splittable according to all the rules uh, in this local municipality. So to create another APN, or in now that huge backyard, uh, almost a half an acre, is ready to be... Uh, it's ready for another house. It's ready for a, a builder to come in and build a house on it. Can I? Can I say something? So, you know, it, really quickly, okay. we. But I want to the seller to didn't that. know that. Right. The seller just thought it was a backyard, so we purchased and bought the house as if we were never going to do this. So we are creating a, approximately a hundred and fifty thousand dollars of extra revenue in this deal. Is that worth it? I'm not sure. What? I'm not sure if we actually are doing the right thing. Is, are we going to make the money? Yeah. Is it going to take what? It's probably going to take 30 to 45 days longer. And the people that are involved in this are ultra professional. So it's going to happen. So yeah, it, it is worth it. But I still think... We, we knew it going into it. it. We knew it going into it though. I mean, that's a good but thing. But we didn't price the house that way. No, gosh, no. We priced it as if it, there gonna, were no extra lot at all. Hi, seller. Do you know what this is really worth? Because you could divide your own property. Are you sure you don't want to divide it first and then sell it to us? We don't do that. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> exactly. That would be hilarious. Hey, I look, I just want you to know. Could you imagine if every... Gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> every once in a while, I get a question about, from somebody. They say, why are you taking advantage of people oh. the, the way that you're doing this don't you know that they are going through some life thing and you should be paying paying them fair market value of for their property how dare you however we are this has Hold happened on a moment. in years actually however we are i really want to say that we knew into it we went into this knowing what was possible and just knowing that in the end it could be even better right the initial purchase and a straight resale was worth it enough. Now the rest is gravy. Right. So I think I sleep well at night knowing we did the right thing on this transaction. And I love the way we're doing it. I don't know how much you want to share or not share. Just not the location. Oh, I'm not going to share the location. Okay. So what's cool about what we're doing this is because we're not ding, we're not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are Some of the time. I shouldn't say that. Not, not on this transaction. <laughs> there are plenty of other things that I personally dump that, that are stupid. Oh, I wasn't talking about oh, you. Okay. I was talking about me. Okay. <laughs> well, we both have stupid stuff. So anyway, I'm not going to say any of them right now. And they're in the garage. Anyway, <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know, we do overpay for... No, we actually don't even overpay We didn't overpay. 
Did I get we more? Overbought. Do you know what? Did I get more vehicle than I really needed for my little compute commute to my office when I go there once a week? Hell yes. So, but does it make me happy? She'll drive. Hell yes. Burns the back tires off of her car in a in, in about a half a mile exactly. on a side I street. Where to go? <laughs> <laughs> One block off the water. Because all the people are on the water. I don't want to take them out. So anyway, it's much safer over here. Jill has this whole rocker component to her personality that oh, never you. comes out. You just you come out like the sweet, nice homemaker on this show. Yeah, put me behind the wheel. <laughs> put me behind the wheel or put me on anything like a snowmobile or, or Vespa or you know, yeah. any vehicle. Oh, was, yeah. I go crazy. I don't know what it is. I just have this. That's my adrenaline thing. I get that. Maybe what it it's is. all your pent up angst about me. No. And you just take it out on our vehicle, which Maybe is good for that me. That could, actually, that could be it. I get mad. No, that's not good. That's not safe. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what was my point um, about that? Oh, so here's the thing about this deal. We all went into it knowing that what's possible What's possible, what's possible. Well, we'd be stupid if while we're trying to sell it, we're not starting the process of what's possible. So that's what we're doing. We are actually starting the process of subdividing. Are we going to absolutely wait to the bitter end to sell it that way? No. Heck no. But so here's what we're doing. We are all along the process uh, marketing it that way because if somebody wants to swoop in and buy it from me tomorrow uh, at the price, you know, at, at a still good deal to them, where I'll just basically hand the paperwork over to them and tell them at any point, finish it. You know, here we're two weeks in. There's four more weeks to go. Hey, and we price it applicable that they're still going to get it. They're going to get an awesome deal, and we've done the legwork on. We started the whole process for them. Everybody wins. If that happens, that's the best thing, and that's what we're doing. And some version of that will happen. We will yeah. have done our job and yeah. found the right buyer. The buyer that sees exactly. a value in that, and you know, we don't actually necessarily have to cross the finish line. Right. We but. And we're not going to wait. We make that person understand the value of this of the two APNs versus the one. Exactly. And there's a small chance they want to tear the house down and build one big house on a, a massive house. lot, which I doubt in it's, that neighborhood. But knock yourself out. It's such a big parcel that you could have still because there, there's there's a looking at that land on an aerial map, you can see that um, people have done it, divided that same lot size into fourths. And then you even found even more that you they could, could even put, if you put ta- townhouses, townhouses on it. So yeah. if, you, if we were in California, we'd get it rezoned and jam like 14 exactly. houses on there. So there's a lot of possibility. And I love, we're just doing the conservative. Let's just cut it in half. You can still have two awesome, huge homes on that. Yeah. Without its own change. Exactly. So yeah, it's cool to sit around and talk about this. In the end, it's probably going to take twice as long as we think uh, and cost twice as much money. And that's that's the problem with it. All to put improving property. You know the houses that we renovated. Boy, I wish we could go back in time there. And do what? With the exception, and not do it. Just oh, wholesale oh. it back out. Oh well, yeah. I know. Well, with that, the exception well, yeah. of one. Do you know what one we had we to touch really it? Well you know what? Yeah, We're we a had perfect to do example. It. Yeah. We had to touch it. We 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 are eating our own words. We yep. did that, and I've done that. I've like that was for me actually becoming a parent. I've never ate my words so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's my oh thing. Oh my God, boy, is that true? It's becoming a parent. You know, you know how it is. Everyone here who's listening and watching, if you're a parent, you know, you're. We all do that. Oh, not my child, kind of thing. And then you go into it and you find like, yeah, well, my kid did it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. So I'm very good at eating my words now. So we did that. That's what we did with the renovations, yeah. and now we don't do them anymore. And that's fine. And I'm happy to share that. I'm happy to share. I told someone the other day, part of the reason why we're here is to save you. Let me tell you about, (laughs) let me tell you what we did and all the mistakes we made. And if you, maybe, maybe it's your forte and you, you, you know a way around them. Well, we didn't. And we know what we're good at. This is our thing. If somebody sat me down, (laughs) you know, you know how we make decisions now. I mean, we go through weeks of research and hours and hours online and, and especially with real estate deals. I mean... It's almost virtually risk-free by the time we buy it, and then we're selling it so easy. True. If somebody sat down and said, you need to do 180 hours of research about being a parent, here's here's your reading list. Could you imagine? I want you to interview these people, and you would never do it. Right. If you had all the information about children and marriage and being a grown-up, you wouldn't do any of it. It's a horrific, awful thing. Yeah, that's true. I'd be listening. Yeah, that's true. It would be much better if I was living at home and had my pizza job or what <laughs> you know we can still do that together you know we can both deliver pizzas on oh i didn't deliver them shifts oh you just eat them no <laughs> <laughs> well, 
what the heck? <laughs> What's your pizza job? Make the pizzas. At home? Make No. No, that was my first job. I didn't know this. Oh, there my things, goodness. Like you worked at Domino's or something? No, Straw Hat Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> my first job was Straw Hat Pizza. I was barely... I think I, I was 15 and a half. I envy you, Jill. I don't even think I was 16 yet. So, and uh, met my first boyfriend there, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> you had a boyfriend when you were 15? Well, yeah. It was, then it was 16, and I'm not, there was an age difference, and my dad was not happy. I'm on your dad's side here. I know, and I'm on my dad's side, too. That was not good. I mean, it's not that big of an age difference. I mean, he was 21, and I was That's 16. huge. I know. That's a felony. I, I know. <laughs> New subject. <laughs> I have some questions that we're going to ask in the after show. Okay. Well, you've done it again. You've spent another 15 minutes listening to the Land Academy show. Join us uh, tomorrow where we talk about tiny houses and RVs and mobile homes as ways to improve your property that you probably shouldn't do. <laughs> and we answer your questions posted on landinvestors.com. It is our online community and it's free. You are not alone. In your real estate ambition. Okay, so you you have this this twenty one year old boyfriend, Joe. Greg. Yeah, I mean, is that okay? He drove a black beetle, all surfed out, and I just thought he was the cutest thing. My God, how did that end? It, great. I mean, everybody fine. shook hands and oh, said it's yeah, over. Yeah, totally. It was not. You know, it was one of those things. We just kind of we just kind of went our separate ways. I don't know. It's you know. You're leaving a lot out. I am bothered. Because there's no such thing purpose. as a mutual breakup. I'm just kidding. <laughs> there was no big breakup. You know. It was just a summer or something. Yeah, maybe that was it. Summer fling. You know what? Well, that's true. I had to go back to school and he still worked at yeah, the pizza place. Yeah, because he's a place. grown adult. Exactly. <laughs> and you were a child. <laughs> All right. Yes. Anyway, hey, you like, no, I don't know if you could tell. You seem like my Land Academy 2.0. Oh, yeah, cool. Ooh, I'm testing out stuff for our live event, buying. Buying, uh, testing stuff. the swag out. Testing out the swag. Actually deciding what to invest and not invest in. And I don't know if I'm going to go here because I feel kind of like I'm wearing. I feel like a 50-year-old golfer. So I am. <laughs> ah, so this is a one of a kind. 60-year-old then? golfer. This is actually limited edition right here because I probably won't have any more of these. We're going to get some cooler swag is where it's going. <laughs> Share the fun by subscribing on iTunes or wherever you are listening. And while you're at it, please rate us there. We, we are, are Jack Steve and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.